Don't talk about the weather. Shh. It's a military secret. Just keep your wits together. Shh. That's the safest way to keep it. These are critical times. Be careful of espionage. Welcome, climate viewers. This is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com. It is August 9th, 2015, and I'm getting ready to head to an EPA hearing on flight pollution at the Bill Clinton Building EPA headquarters in Washington, D.C. I want to thank everybody who supported me uh, with the GoFundMe to get me there. I couldn't have done it without you. I want to thank you, all of the people who have supported me over the last three years. Um, you guys arguing with me and sending me links and sending me love has you know, really kept me on track and kept me going. I really appreciate it. This is the speech that I'm going to give at the hearing. I'm about to play it in just a moment. I hope that you guys will tune in. There's going to be a live conference call during the hearing. So if you want to listen to all of us up there um, haggle with the EPA, um, there's an 800 number with a conference code, so please call in and uh, listen. It'll be August 11th at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, so please tune in. Uh, listen to my message. Um, this is my speech that I, I'm only allowed 10 minutes to speak. Um, I got it down to eight minutes, so that gives me two minutes to improvise. Um, there's going to be some big players showing up. I'm very excited about that, um, plus we have several people from our community going now that's exciting um this is going to be epic and i hope that you guys will tune in please listen to my message um share it i'm going to make a free pdf version of my speech available uh public domain you guys can share it uh send it to your representatives send it to your friends and your family and uh let's really get educated on this stuff so that we can all make a difference um so here goes my speech i hope you guys will support me and i hope you'll tune in and Let's, let's make a difference, guys. This is going to be awesome. Why is the EPA claiming that six greenhouse gases emitted from jet planes are a threat to human health under the Clean Air Act while doing nothing to address ongoing lawsuits over leaded aviation gasoline or the real health concerns of stakeholders worldwide? Cancer-causing heavy metals in fuels and their additives and aviation-induced cloudiness. You, the EPA, claim the authority to regulate aviation emissions under the Clean Air Act 231A2A, a law that should protect us from the aforementioned poisonous pollution. However, the definition of pollution is being perverted to mean climate change gases in what can only be called a violation of the spirit of the law. Quote, Air pollution which may be reasonably anticipated to endanger public health or welfare. As you can see by the wording on the Clean Air Act, lead, barium, aluminum, and trade secret toxic chemicals clearly present a greater danger to public health than greenhouse gases do, no matter how much climate science you pile up. Furthermore, material safety data sheets of fu aviation fuels and their additives almost always contain the same writing, do not dump in water, yet raw fuel dumping or burning these chemicals and then dumping them in water is somehow safe. Finally, despite great efforts to find bioaccumulation or biomagnification studies on precipitated aviation pollutants, none seem to exist. The EPA and Obama administration are ignoring the global outrage over the most visible climate change concern from airplanes, cloud creation. Do a search for the word chemtrails and you will see millions of concerned citizens who look up and wonder what in the world are they spraying. Despite what you may think of the myriad of maladies attributed to these clouds, the global outrage is nonetheless clear. They are right to be worried, and we should all be concerned. The EPA's claim that CO2 is a greater threat to human health than contrails is based on erroneous IPCC data that downplays the effects on, of contrails on our climate. The IPCC's last assessment of contrail radiative forcing only accounted for linear contrails meaning that any contrail that spreads out and turns into cirrus clouds was not accounted for. How significant is the heat-trapping contrail conundrum? Quote, Contrails formed by aircraft can evolve into cirrus clouds indistinguishable from those formed naturally. 
These spreading contrails may be causing more climate warming today than all the carbon dioxide emitted by aircraft since the start of aviation. Another researcher stated, a single aircraft operating in conditions favorable for persistent contrail formation appears to exert a contrail-induced radiative forcing some 5,000 times greater than recent estimates of the average persistent contrail radiative forcing from the entire civil aviation fleet. Scientific understanding of how contrails transition into cirrus clouds is severely lacking, but rapidly evolving with the latest research showing that cirrus clouds are filled with metal aerosols from human sources. The big one we found is lead. It comes from things like tetraethyl lead in fuels, still used in some light aviation. So that's probably the biggest metal we find, or the most frequent metal we find. But we find a whole host of different metals, actually. End quote. Apparently, small amounts of metal particles have major effects on cirrus clouds. It would seem that you would have to change all of the aerosol in the atmosphere very radically to get a big effect on these clouds, but because mineral dust and metallic particles are such a small amount of the particulate matter, just a percent or two, it means that you only have to change a percent or two of the particles to get a big effect on these clouds. The latest research casts doubts on the IPCC's contrail assumptions and requires serious consideration when addressing the real climate change impact of aviation. High altitude metals and cirrus cloud condensation nuclei are likely coming from leaded avgas and jet exhaust. Contrails are making cirrus clouds and small changes in atmospheric metal have large impacts on cirrus cloud creation. Cirrus clouds trap heat and likely have a greater climate change impact than CO2. Finally, aviation-induced cloudiness endangers future growth in solar energy, affects tourism, and is projected to make terrestrial astronomy impossible by 2050. Geoengineering scientists, NASA, NOAA, FAA, USDA, DOE, and international corporate partners are discussing the use of biofuels and sulfur dope jet fuels for contrail control and cirrus cloud seeding with bismuth triiodide to melt these clouds away. The EPA should be involved directly in these discussions. As a result of these recent findings, I strongly encourage the EPA to consider expanding the scope of this endangerment to include metal particulates and cloud formation from jet exhaust. If the EPA complies with the spirit of the Clean Air Act, they will protect us from metal aerosols attributed to Alzheimer's, autism, cancer, and a plethora of other debilitating illnesses. If the EPA is truly concerned about aviation-induced climate change, they will regulate the production of contrails and cirrus clouds which change our climate to a much greater extent than the sum of the six greenhouse gases named in this proposal. Regulating heavy metals and aviation-induced cloudiness will be meaningless without proper verification even though international civil aviation organization members sign a binding agreement to only use certain chemicals in their gas tanks, we all know agreements and regulations are useless without proper verification. Therefore, I request mandatory random testing of jet exhaust be immediately implemented. This is the most important step the EPA can take to follow the spirit of the law, do its due diligence to protect us from harmful pollution and get real-world data to improve future regulations. Most of the data behind this endangerment finding comes from research in highly controlled environments where most variables are known. We need verification of non-ideal situations where fuel fouling, fame contamination, or improper maintenance end in vastly different exhaust particulates than seen in lab settings. To achieve verification, I propose that the EPA randomly attach a trailing probe to both foreign and domestic flights, then collect and analyze the results to determine real-world exhaust constituents. Alternatively, ground-based LIDAR observations may be possible over fixed, high-traffic areas and prevent possible terrorist attacks using aerosols. Either way you choose, we need verification and protection. 
In conclusion, the EPA should expand this endangerment to include metal aerosols and cloud creation, create a verification system that includes all aircraft, protects us from aviation pollution, holds violators accountable, and commits to better scientific accuracy for future determinations. Thank you for this opportunity to speak on behalf of so many who could not be here. James Lee, Climate Viewer News. Thank you.